the situation where we, where Israel treated 99% of the Palestinians better 99% of the time and were 100% more brutal on the bad guys all the time. Then we need checkpoints. Everybody can visit their cousin, visit their sister, visit their friend without going through military bureaucracy. And if somebody's really a, a danger to the, uh, to the state or a danger to people or whatever, then you handle it. Oh. And, and by the way, when you, you for, put them in handcuffs. Well, no, I'll tell you, I, my job in the army, my unit, what we did is when the Secret Service, the Shabbat, wanted a specific terrorist, we had to go and get him. We had to kick in his door, arrest him in the middle of the night. We know that the, there is a lot of propaganda coming out of Israel that the wall stopped terrorism. The wall did not stop terrorism. The wall didn't even finish it. The wall stopped it. Reduced it what? It reduced it. No, it didn't even reduce it. What happened was the wall was built, it started being built right after Operation Defensive Shield. When for the first time in 10 years, the IDF and the Shabak were back in Tolkarim and Jenin and Hebron and Ramallah. I was a soldier in 2003. We knew when a suicide bomber was leaving his house. Nobody got to the wall, was overwhelmed and went home. But I'll tell you politically, what took place is that you have a lot of pressure, as you pointed out, you have a lot of pressure from the West for Israel to create a Palestinian state, right? In essentially the land that Israel won from Jordan in 1967. And if you tell the majority of the Israeli public is not ideological today. The majority of the Israeli public today is security minded. Which is also the result of westernization. But the majority of the Israeli public is security minded, meaning they want to be safe. They don't want to worry about their kids getting blown up. They, they want to have normal lives. And we can argue the merits of that though. But if you tell the Israeli public that if you tell the Israeli public that the terrorism was reduced as a result of the IDF and the Shabak. Can you guys open the window? Yes. Sorry. I think the window will be locked. Yeah, they're locked windows, yeah. Can someone break it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. If it, if, it, if it does get too hot, I'll open the door, open open the door again. I just want you guys to be able to hear. So, if, um, if you tell the Israeli public that the terrorism stopped because the IDF and the Shabak are in Ramallah and Janin, then the majority of the Israeli public will say, stay there. But if you tell the Israeli public that the terrorism stopped because we built a wall and we're on this side and they're on that side, the majority of the Israeli public will say, all right, let's be on our side and let be on their side. So if the Americans and the Europeans are pressuring the government of Israel non-stop to give away that land, then they have to tell the public it's because of the wall. Otherwise, everybody would oppose a two-state solution. You know, let's be logical. If yeah. uh, <coughs> there were, uh, let's say, uh, for example, if there's not any checkpoints in Air Force, drug uh, will come more easily uh, to any city. The drug, uh, right, but, but uh, the uh, uh, drug is all uh, everywhere. Look. But if there won't be any checkpoints at the airport, right. well, there is the best way to uh, transfer drugs uh, from the uh, airports. You, you, uh, let me. Um, I don't want to get. I, I hear what you're saying, and I don't really want to get stuck on like like when it comes to the issue of checkpoints. I'm not talking about the situation as it exists today minus checkpoints. I'm talking about a reality where the incentive to blow Israeli buses up is gone. It's not just about, you know, by the way, I think Israel is 100% responsible to provide not only education, but also health care to Palestinians. Why? Why? It's, they're living in our country. And that is quick response. Right? Yeah. So if if the Palestinians, I'm, I'm telling you as a, as a Jordanian, and I know many Palestinians, I have, I have family in Palestine. So I'm telling you that Palestinians, if, if they, this is like the perfect solution for them, is if they just say, okay, fine, we want to be part of Israel. Yeah. We don't want to Palestine. But call it whatever you want. We made peace. Okay, that's it. We don't want, we don't, but that give us, that, that, give us, and mother, that's what every Palestinian tells me. Give us, the give, us, give, us the right, give us the right to vote. Sure. Have to be a democratic state. Sure. Theme. Okay, so sure. if that happens, then... Uh, I don't think anyone would, would disagree. It doesn't have to be called Palestine. It could be called 
Anything. No, it'll be called Mercury Number 2. It'll be called Yeah, it's going to be called Okay, it can be called Palestine. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't, I'm saying it doesn't have to be called Palestine. But just give the. By the way, it's also called Palestine. Historically, the place called Palestine. No, exactly. It's called Palestine in the, in, in the Bible. It's called, it's well, not in the Bible, but later. Historically, in historical books, between 135 and 1948, it was Palestine. So I'm saying just give the Palestinian ethnic Palestine, or Arabs right. the right to vote. Sure. Yeah. And, a, and a house in parliament, an actual democratic state, mm -hmm. not one with. But, but, by, by the way, by, by the way, now. what what you say is fine with me, but you should know that the majority of Palestinians who are living there often tell me, "Hey, we don't even want to vote. Just just tear down this military bureaucracy." No, I'm, I'm, yeah, I think what you're what would like to have a right right. What, which, So let's assume everybody let, let's assume everybody wants to vote. That doesn't bother me. And I think that, by the way, out of all the solutions being kicked around today, I personally believe the most realistic solution is a one-state solution. Is a one-state solution where everybody has equal rights, everybody gets to vote. And you're right that, that, that Israel, Israel has a has a has, has a uh, responsibility to provide health care, to right. provide safety, to yeah. provide you know uh, but education. Uh, okay, so but while we're talking, what we need in return is the acknowledgement that the Jewish people are a Middle Eastern people with historical rights to self-determination in that country uh -huh. and to be able to express that self-determination through sovereignty from the Mediterranean to the Jordan. Right. So with everybody else being able to live there with health care and schools and voting and whatever. Okay. So Palestinians become impoverished second class citizens. Why impoverished second class citizens? Because um, the level of development, of education, of all of these things. Have you been there? There are very wealthy Palestinians. There, there, yeah. Sure. Yeah. There's, there's a handful yeah. of very wealthy Palestinians, but overall, the, the, you know, the well, By the way, the, the same thing can be said, hold on, the same thing can be said about Israel, about Israelis. Oh, mm -hmm. about, about, about the settlers, they're, they're getting paid to go there in the first place. So that, which is why there's not that many well, Jews for, in Afghanistan and not that many Jews in Iraq. They're getting paid to go to Israel. Well, well, actually, you, the you Russians call right of return. I don't, okay, but when, you, when well, you're, no, saying there, you're, you're saying is it, when you say they're being paid right. to go there, you're speaking as if it's a whole other place. You have to understand that that land where where they are being, where their uh, homes are being subsidized is, is part of this. No, state. they're not being it's subsidized not, anymore. That, oh, that's no, that's been over. Their home's being torn down. Do you support house demolitions? <laughs> the settlements. Yeah. Like, look at Migron, look at Givat Asaf. Okay, well, what I'm talking about is settlements. First of, all, first of all, settlements are. are what do you call a settlement? Why do you use the word settlement? I'm telling you. It, Talk about I, I, live, I live in Beit El, mm -hmm. next to Ramallah. Okay. What, about, what makes it a settlement? Am I a, a Dutch person in South Africa? What's the definition of a settlement? I don't know. Some foreigner came there and created some artificial community. Okay, so what I'm saying, a settlement is... is if, if we're indigenous, it's not right, a settlement. It's right. a town, it's a village, indigenous, it's a community. In, indigenous as... In to what time? Into what time frame, I'm saying? You're saying in, indigenous to... From how long were you're you You're Jordanian? Yeah. You live in America now? Yes. But you're, you're indigenous to Jordan. And yeah. you're... And you're Actually, I was born in Jordan. Okay. Your grandchildren, in my opinion, are indigenous to Jordan. Okay, well, that's fine, grandchildren. Right? But what you're talking about is... Because you how have to long separate... have I got? No, 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 how no. long have I got? Look, for me, well, I'm not saying, I'm not, okay, no, 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 first of all, that's beside I'll, the point. I'll answer the question. I'm, the I'm, I'm happy to answer the question. But what I'm, but the original point was yeah. that what you don't have that many, you're saying that they're poor Israelis, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's what, yeah. this is yeah. that's what, that's okay. what, that, that's what, that's yeah. what you were saying in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, they're giving, uh, Jews from other countries are given incentives mm -hmm. to go to live in Israel on settlements. First of all, by which are illegal under international law. Okay, I, I don't accept international law, first of all. I'm going to say that right now, because I don't believe I don't believe that a bunch of rich white countries get to tell small poor countries what to do. These rich countries are countries. No, but in, in what sense is Israel poor? Uh, I mean, it has a per capita GDP along the lines of, of most highly developed United States. Absolutely. Okay, so we can it's get into But you still have poor Israel. Israel receives more money than the majority. The majority, 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 majority about a third of Israel's Jewish population. Without counting other people, are living below the poverty line. Yes. Now we can argue about whether the poverty line in Israel is the same as the poverty line in certain parts of in Asia or of Africa PPP, but or Palestine. I have a question. Yeah. Would on. you say would you say that subsidies in these areas that you're going to talk about similar to the subsidies we give to people in, in Detroit? Are they similar? Or well, what, what I would first of all, I already you were here when I spoke about the Palestinian Authority giving subsidies for Palestinians to Fatah. Connected Palestinians to live in Hebron to outbreed Sheikh Jabri. Did you hear that part? Okay. Okay, because we're talking, if we're already talking about financial subsidies, and right now, do you guys know what Area C is? Yeah. yeah. I just want to lay it on the table. Area C, right now, the European Union, this, was, this came out two weeks ago, everybody's familiar with the European Union, is now paying for Palestinians to move to Area C. You know that? Okay. You, you, you accept that? 
I'm not making that Can up. Repeat that again. The European Union is, f is spending money to build Palestinian neighborhoods in Area C, right? Area C okay. is is a part of the West Bank that where about 99% of the Jews who live in the West Bank live there, and all of Area C is about 6% Pal like 6 of the Palestinians in the West Bank live in Area C, 99% of the Jews live in Area C. The European Union now is funding new communities and giving financial incentives <coughs> for Palestinians to move to Area C. Now that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is the hypocrisy of you saying that we can't give money for these people to move here, and by the way, Israel's not doing it anymore. I am not getting any financial incentive to live in Beit El. I got no financial incentive to live in Ras al-Amud. And when I used to go to the hilltops and start new Jewish so communities, I wasn't getting any... No, there's something called the law of return, okay. where ethnic Jews are giving financial incentives to repatriate back to their country. And why was that denied? Not, not why was that denied to the Ethiopians who tried to go to Israel? It wasn't denied. It wasn't denied. No, they were. Are they considered? Are they considered?